understand when are you going to retire? From what? Why would I retire? I got it made. I get well paid. I like what I'm doing. Are you serious? I wouldn't quit this until they carry me out, as they will someday, but God willing, not soon. Stanley's influence through his teaching has been extraordinarily far-reaching. I am amazed at how he has done this for 50 years. He has brought tremendous honor and prestige to the University of Texas Law School. Stanley Johansson's a rock star, the national authority. You're learning from the guru here. He's just the walking embodiment of UT Law School. He is the man in Texas and around the country. There's nobody that compares with him. He works harder than anybody else at what he does. I've never met anybody who enjoys doing what they do as much as my dad does. And it's a very contagious enthusiasm. I feel like every one of his students carries him with them through life. He taught my older brother, he taught me, he taught my younger brother, he taught my son, and he taught my daughter. Everybody's had Professor Johansson. He's affected every person's career. He doesn't make a big deal about he himself, does. but everybody else does. Everybody else knows that he is a legend. Well, Stanley Johansson was not born with a silver spoon in his mouth, did not have much when he was growing up, just hard work, smart as a whip. I was born and raised in Seattle. My father was a fisherman. My mother was working in a cannery there. My father left for Alaska in mid-April every year and came back to Seattle in mid-October, almost six months. And every fall, he would come down from Alaska and take every part off of this diesel engine, clean it, and know how to put it back together again. Whereas the other two boys had inherited their dad's ability to take something apart and put it back together, it would have been dangerous, I think, for my father to have even tinkered with the engine. So he learned early on that maybe he wasn't as good with his hands, but he was definitely good with his mind. I was very good at school, taking tests and so on, but when it came to the laboratories, I was a, I, I was a misfit. I have ability, but it has nothing to do with the uh, dexterity. Growing up during the Depression, he realized that in order to succeed in life, he needed the best education he could get and focused on that. My parents never had the chance I had, seventh grade education, and here I'm sent to one of the most prestigious schools in the country, Yale. Two years at Harvard, I got a master's degree. I'd never met a lawyer. And I go to law school and I become a lawyer. Not just a lawyer, but a teacher of other lawyers. And how does that, education is the key that opens all doors. You got the immigrant son, American dream. One afternoon I came back from uh, my work, such as it was, and I returned the call to the legendary Paige Keaton. This is Paige Keaton calling from Austin, Texas. We'd like you all come down and have a visit. In retrospect, if you're into wills and trust and estate planning, Texas is the place to be. Both Stanley and I were very close in age to our students. They were being taught by someone who was one or two or three years younger than they were. He was not much older than we were, but it was widely known that he was one professor you really needed to uh, take before you got out of law school. I taught first year property and I taught wills and estates. And in retrospect, I was pretty good at it. Everybody needs people who teach wills and property. And so I was kind of a hot ticket. After I took that first class, I wanted to take every class he taught. He was incredibly prepared for classes and had this incredible ability at communicating. And that's what, in my opinion, made him so powerful. He was funny, he was coaxing, he got good answers out of them, and he didn't make any effort to embarrass them. That was the first time in my life that a law school class was fun. There was more conversation happening in a Stanley Johansson classroom than any other law class I was in. He took very complicated tax material and he would boil it down to the simplest level. Because until they make it their own, 
they will not be successful. And bottom line, Professor Johansson wants to make people successful. Say not that you know a man till you've shared an inheritance with him. That pretty much sums it up. I don't teach wills, I teach lawyering. How to be a lawyer and have people entrust their possessions and their future careers, or at least their decisions in life, I'm preparing people for that kind of uh, life experience. Your clients are people. And it's true that clients are people also if you do criminal law, but they're not the kind of people you want to have dinner with. What Stanley has a great ability at doing is showing the human drama that comes in helping people dispose of their assets. You really have to be half lawyer and half psychiatrist. You have to understand the human condition. You have to understand relationships among people. You have to have had life experiences that give you background, that allow you to make judgments of what's best for a family. Stanley, uh, because of his incredible depth of experience, uh, brought those in spades. No one wants to talk about death and dying, and he makes it accessible and you can talk about it. He even tells us over thanks to me, he's like, well, at home, make sure you tell your parents and talk to your grandma and all of these people about their wills and their trusts. So you can tell he cares about the real life application of this stuff. There are a good number of practitioners in this area that do it strictly because of Stanley. That's, that's a fact, there's no question about that. I will say emphatically that I am an estate planning lawyer 100% because of Stanley Johansson and he kids me back and says, well, where are my royalties? 50 years is phenomenal. And when you think of the number of students every year he taught, and then you multiply that by 50, the impact that Stanley Johansson has had is second to none. I always try to tell the kids in his class when I go to speak to his class how dedicated he is beyond the law school. And that is truly one of the things that makes him a very good citizen and a very good member of our profession. He did CLEs, he did bar review courses all over the nation, he wrote textbooks, he wrote innumerable outlines that he freely distributed to all practitioners. The man's energy and capacity to work seems to have no limit, then or now. It seems as though he's always at the top of his game. And all of these times, he maintains an upbeat, very friendly personality. Everybody remembers him by being uh, almost boisterous, uh, jumping up on the table uh, kind of guy, like Tigger in Winnie the Pooh. I remember that day in class that you danced on the table. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember why you did it. <laughs> now it's a little harder, for, unless I have a ladder, you know, or a pulley, I don't get up on the desk anymore. He first had his assistant come in and tell us that we were having a guest speaker on material that was going to be on our exam. And I remember him being so annoyed. But he comes in as Elvis, uh, literally a full white suit, sunglasses, the wig, the, wig, the, the whole wig. thing. He has more energy now than I had back when I took him as a student. One of the best assets that he has is his wife, Jerry, whom he calls Mrs. Johansson to us. And he and she have this love affair that is so obvious. She goes everywhere with him. During his lecture, she's in the back of the room. He always introduces her because she is the most important person in that room. And he will also tell you that she had a lot to do with forming him to what he is today. The single most important decision I made in my life, I took Latin as a sophomore at Ballard High School. And there was a really pretty girl there. Her name was Geraldine Cunningham, and she was awfully nice and awfully pretty. I got up enough nerve to ask her for a date. The rest is history. And I can tell you, I wouldn't be here today without her. Jerry says, when we get married, we're gonna have six children. And I said, okay. 12 grandchildren, 10 grandsons, two granddaughters, that makes it all worthwhile. Everything else is icing on a very rich cake. What the educational system opened up for him is a testament for why institutions like the University of Texas Law School are so important. 
uh, for the future of our state and for the future of our country. He actually cares about the entire law school and he cares about the entire University of Texas system. He is the school's ambassador to the world at large. The University of Texas, we're king of the hill. We have had the top echelons of our class, the best law students, and they turn out to be the best lawyers. And here I'm a part of this. What a wonderful thing to be around such goal-directed, motivated young men and women. That's, that's the elixir of life, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know how the University of Texas got him to stay this long, but we're all grateful that they did. You seem to never, ever quit being a student of his. We never quit learning from Stanley, even those of us who have been practicing over 30 years. I still have my casebook from the spring of 1980. It's a perfect reflection of his personality and his scholarship and his teaching style. Wait, Johansson nerd. <laughs> this is what I got from my father when I went home. <laughs> Johansson's probate code annotated. Also, it's changing to the state's code next year, in 2014. So this will be a classic. I think the University of Texas is phenomenally lucky to have had him for 50 years. It is in his blood. We are not going to see Stanley Johansson in the rocking chair out on the porch. And even when he is not teaching, his presence will continue to be felt. He is a legend, and he has a legacy that clearly will live on forever. The most gratifying thing is to see our graduates three, five, 10, 20, 30 years ago saying, Professor Johansson, you made a difference in my life. Wow, that's pay. There's no way of measuring the value of that. Find your passion. I've found my passion. It continues to make a very productive and gratifying and wholesome uh, time on earth.